fight against drugs, as you know, is different. It takes various forms. The punishment imposed by uh, uh, various countries is different. In some countries, punishment is death. In some countries, it's imprisonment. And uh, now, then there are other opinions that maybe we are losing the fight against drug trafficking and drug menace. And maybe we need to take a different approach to this issue. Maybe it's time we stop criminalization of people who use drugs and who are in possession of the thing. That is one thought going on. Whether that will help or not, I don't know, give me the call. In America, in America, in some states, marijuana now is being allowed to be grown and so. I think in uh, Europe, in some countries also. So there are various issues. Anyway, right? But the end result of what we want to do is how do we eradicate this problem? Basically, the ultimate end is that because it affects the human body, it affects your health, your wealth, and uh, on, due to this, we have to, uh, have to fight it out on all fronts. Mizoram has now become a major conduit for transporting ephedrine and pseudo ephedrine to Myanmar, where it is made into meta -antigone. There are a large number of heroin addicts in Mizoram. In my conversation with people from various walks of life regarding the drug problem in Mizoram, it is often stated that the enforcement agencies and the courts have to take a more strict, no nonsense approach against drug related cases. In this uh, context, I would like to state that the uh, courts act upon the charge sheets submitted by the enforcement agencies. Accordingly, the enforcement agencies have the initial responsibility to act upon the mandatory provisions of law at the time of search and seizure of the contraband articles and the arrest of the person involved. This is a very important issue. See, I have had the occasion to deal with uh, these cases as a lawyer and as a judge. And there was a case that had come before me in 2015 where there was a seizure of 8 lakh, I think, 86 thousand tablets of pseudo -epidemic. Now, they were, I don't remember, but uh, the seizure memo said they are orange and blue color. But the sample that was sent to the FSF was uh, green. Now, there was no explanation given for that. Then that got me thinking, is there something wrong with this, uh, uh, this enforcement agency? I passed an order and I also sent it to the commissioner of the enforcement agency. So, so that they would look into the matter. If this was going on in such a blatant manner, I don't know whether it was uh, some unusual motive or a genuine mistake. But it, it, they had the opportunity to correct that issue while it was caught. So the petition was not coming. So it was in this context that I said that the enforcement agencies have a crucial role to play because the courts can only act upon the charge sheet submitted by them. We cannot go beyond their investigation and their work. Thus, we need clean and dedicated officers in the enforcement agencies and the courts. There should be accountability and action taken against those officers who don't follow the law and who cannot give proper explanation for the same. Regular training sessions on the provisions of the NDNPS Act, comma, Evidence Act, the CRPC, should be given to the enforcement person. Because you see, they should also be aware uh, and it should be hammered into their heads that these are mandatory provisions. The law is strict, no doubt, but at the same time, 
there are certain provisions which have to be followed by the agent. And that may be little time for you. But it has to be done. There is also a need for the private citizens to shoulder responsibility and take part in the process for the application of victims of drug abuse and also be a witness and participant in the legal process or any legally scientific process for the application of drug We as citizens also have a role to play. Please do not share your responsibility. Of course, I will not say take the law into your own hands, but help the law enforcement agencies take the to, to apply the law. Now we all know that the, in the use of drugs, the most vulnerable section of the society is the young people. It's not the old who suddenly you know, do drugs. It's usually the young. Maybe school children and all that. And for that, we have to have a lot of awareness given <coughs> to school children and to college, uh, any degree in the uh, educational institutions. And uh, I think the Mizoram State Legal Services have done a good job in identifying a college for having this seminar. It's a very apt choice because this will give awareness to these persons who will in turn tell their peers because one of the reasons for persons doing drugs is peer pressure also. And they have been young uh, boys and girls, I think they will be beneficial and they will help strike their blood. There should be more seminars and workshops, there should be publicity by way of advertisement and if you bring this kind of a program to various localities, you know, not in a closed space all the time, maybe in the streets somewhere, have uh, some skip done. And uh, having said the about, I'm quite sure that the seminar will immensely help Everyone is gaining knowledge and awareness and I trust that we will all play a greater role for imparting legal services to victims of drug abuse and for the of drug abuse.
who passed away yesterday evening. We pay respects to him today. As for this zonal seminar, it is encouraging that we can start this seminar in the presence of legal luminaries such as justices from the Honorable County High Court, senior officers from states such as Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Tripura, Arunachal, and Nagaland. Abuse of crack has been very pervasive in Mizoram, taking young lives in its strides, bringing misery and poverty to a large number of families. The price we are paying and yet have to pay on account of drug abuse in Mizoram in particular and in the country in general is beyond mathematical calculation. It is simply enormous. This important zonal seminar will try to find ways to give legal services to victim of drug abuse and also attempt to eradicate drug menace in Mizoram. <coughs> Before I go on, I would like to thank the indulgence of the organizers to introduce Mr. Dr. Rodko Macaulay, principal of this college where we are holding this seminar. I feel it is worth mentioning that Central Young Resort Association, CYMA, has been engaging in a combat against drug abuse for the last so many years. There have been times, even now, when YMA, the biggest non-governmental organization of Mizoram finds it almost hopeless to fight against drug abuse. Is there any representative of Central Wayme today? Unfortunately, they have not been able to come. They have, got, they have been invited, I know. <coughs> Hopefully, this seminar will address some of the problems because courts play a vital role in punishing drug traffickers. I would like to say a simple example. <coughs> We have been fighting, but fighting against vested interest is very difficult. We have found we have found that the method adopted by Mr. Duterte of Philippines may be more effective than our legal weapons because though I am law and judicial minister, I am always tempted to think that the methods we have been employing have not been as effective as we wish to. There are times that I think 
we should persuade legal practitioners not to defend the drug, the drug traffickers, but India is a free country, a democratic country. They have the rights, yet considering the menace and the devastating results drug abuse have brought to the Mizor people and to the other <coughs> the other population in the other country, the other states. I think that there may be some other ways we can evolve to fight against drug abuse. But today is a legal seminar and hopefully this seminar will address some of the problems that I have just mentioned because courts will continue to play a vital role in punishing drug traffickers. I wish these two days journal seminar a success. Thank you very much. Special invites all the participants. If there is any lacuna, something missing, inconveniences on behalf of the organizing, I apologize for that. And I hope the small gifts that have been given away, you accept it as a gift of this uh, coming to this very important. Jonas Seminar. And at the outset, I request all the faculty and the students of Government Mizoram Law College to say thank you to those people, including our chief guest and the tourist resource person who have all come over to this college, to say thank you twice. Let us all say thank you to our guests, invitees, resource person, all the important officials who are coming to our college today. Let us say one, two, three. Thank you. Come on, come on. Thank you. Again, once again, louder. Thank you. Okay. I think that will tell you that we are really thank you. As the principal of this college, uh, I declare that this is the first occasion that so much of dignitaries, officials, including our alumni as the chief guest, we are gathering here for this very important journal seminar. <coughs> this is a real event. This is a real event and very important event. And I really thank the executive chairman Reserve State Legal Services, Authority Justice Ujjal Boyan, for selecting this legal chamber as a venue for this very important seminar. And I hope the law students and even the faculties will make use of this occasion. As I have just said, our chief guests. Honorable Minister Lord Shell Mizoram State, who will Soda, is an alumni. <laughs> Sir, thank you very much for raising this journal seminar as a chief guest. He himself, being a student once, passed out. He has the instinct this college has experienced the bad days in good days, and he has personally witnessed the changes over the years. So this all are possible. Once he was the higher technical education minister during his time as the minister of higher technical education, he had done a lot to this college as a chief minister, as an alumni. And today, basically, he is about to accept our invitation as a chief guest because he is a part of us. So he is not, he is designated as chief guest because this is official, but he is no one but 
our member and alumni. Thank you for coming and inaugurating this journal seminar as the chief guest. Honorable C. Justice Michael Jotan Kumar, Judge, God in High Court, guest of honor. So thank you very much for your enlightening speech. Being judged from your speech, I could realize that you know the reality and the importance of this seminar. Thank you very much for your special address. We miss our guest of honor, C. Justice Ujalbain, Judge Gandhi High Court. Though he is not with us, I sure and I'm sure that he is with us spiritually, not physically. And as I said, he selected this legal chamber, Gautam Mizoram Law College, as the venue of today's journal seminar for his love, for his love of the victims of judge and judge finish, eradication of judge finish. And he wants maximum assistance from the law college and the students who are to come as the legal luminaries in the state. I take advantage to say, to say that Justice Pujal Goyan, he accepted three programs in collaboration with Government Visual Law College for legal outreach. Legal outreach. Once I told him, sir, only law, only one, one, one law college in Mizoram. So the whole state is our classroom. Whole Mizoram is our classroom. So he agreed. So we, we proposed to organize legal outreach in three centers. We visited Langway, the airport from where we landed in Mizoram. The tourist guests, we have landed in Langway. That Langway is not a small village, it's a big village. We visited that language or legal outreach program. We speak, deliver speech, free legal clinic, and sample collection on 27th of last month. This program, or that program was in collaboration with the Legal Services Authority, Mizoram. 23rd, next week on 23rd and 24th, we are visiting Vailente on legal audit program that is also in collaboration with Mizoram State Legal Services Authority. And September, uh, last week, September, we are going to visit Nule, the second capital of Mizoram. There we will visit two colleges and we will function like this program, like this seminar, free legal clinic, and legal awareness test with some patients. This three program, series of program, are going to be organized once we have done in collaboration with Mizoram State Legal Services Authority. And for that, our justice is the sole spirit. I thank him for his generosity and love for the victims of legal blind legal band, theft and them. So though we miss him physically, I am sure that he is with us spiritually and I hope that he will be with us in the evening. In all these programs, I thank the member secretary in Mizoram State Legal Services Authority, Kumana Lenkumaya. Since he joined the post, we have been working together as twins in this regard. And for his sacrifice, today's journal seminar is also possible. And I wonder, as the principal of this college, that it is really, it is really, I feel very proud that you all are here with us today, all the way from Punjab from National Legal Services Authority officials, commissioners, member secretaries. I never dream of a day like this, but God has given us the reality 
and with my own eyes, I see you. I welcome you, and I thank you for your coming. And I hope your two days stay in Mizoram will be comforted. I really, I don't know how to express my thanks. I requested my students and faculty to say thank you two times. I think that will be one of the best expressions of my thanks to today's program and your coming to this program. I really thank you. Invite this. Judicial officers, the advocates, officials of the Legal Services Authority, officials and staff of High Court, faculty and members, faculty and students, staff of Government Mizoram Law Police. Thank you very much. And the members, secretaries, and officials from national. I don't know name you, I don't know what you, but if you don't, don't take it otherwise, Mr. Tiwari, professor, law professor, you have come here on this space last year and delivered lectures as a resource person. Thank you for coming again. You really impressed me. So today, I hope we will enjoy and this seminar will be every fruitful. I will conclude with my speech. I cannot, I cannot name all the dignitaries, officials who are coming here. Simply, I want to say that little drops of water make mighty ocean. If you try to mine us, who is not important today among us, no one is to be eliminated. So uh, we are very much inclusive. Everyone is equally important and among this there are some leaders, resource persons we are having who are delivering lectures. So once again we gather here for a theme of legal services for victims of judge abuse. Are you a victim? Yes, I am a victim. You are a victim. And we want to eradicate the just minage. And for that, we join hands and we come together for the last, for this coming two days, today, today and tomorrow. Let us make the best use of it and try to make fruitful to the actual and direct victims. Thank you. They encouraged opium cultivation. Probably length and breadth of it. Though pre independence, we have three enactments the Opium Act, there are two Opium Acts, I mean, the Dangerous Drugs uh, Act of the 18th centuries and 18 something and 1930. But there was acid approval to cultivation of poppy uh, opium and also the consumption of uh, opium. So things came to such a pass that a large segment of the population became addicted or became opium addicted. And uh, our national leaders during the freedom movement had to combat this, had to tackle this problem as well. Because this was a, some kind of a diversion from the objective of the national movement at that point. 47, India became independent. We adopted our constitution. We adopted Article 47, Directive Principles of State Policy, that the state shall take effective steps for uh, prohibition of intoxicating drinks and drugs. But the old laws continue. In the meanwhile, there has been a remarkable uh, you know, change in the trafficking of drugs, narcotics uh, and uh, illicit drugs in the country. India is situated in a place where on the one hand we have the golden triangle countries and on the other hand we have the golden crescent countries. We have Myanmar, Laos, uh, 
uh, Thailand, comprising the Golden Triangle. And there we have Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, the Golden Crescent. So India became a sort of a, a transit uh, for this uh, uh, trafficking of drugs. International conventions were there, India became a party to this. And ultimately, in 1985, the NPS Act was created. We all know practitioners of law knows how difficult or how uh, it is next to impossible. You once you are caught with uh, narcotics of uh, commercial quantity, it is next to impossible to get the house to get the Then there is a presumption of this mainstream that when a commercial quantity is you are caught with a commercial quantity, the presumption is against you, unlike in uh, ordinary, uh, the regular criminal uh, jurisprudence. Then there is a provision for death penalty also, repeat offenders for uh, uh, this uh, uh, commercial quantity. There is a provision for uh, death penalty also. In spite of that, there is no sign of abatement, sign of uh, this problem receding uh, from the country. In fact, it has become worse day by day. If you look at the uh, metro scenario in the metros, look at uh, northeast it was there this problem is endemic for whatever reason but newer areas are uh, being added to the places which are afflicted by the drug management for example the state of Punjab it is one of the major uh, I, I, I have watched this movie Punta Punjab there they had presented this uh, problem recently I have watched this Hindi movie of Sunday. That does also depicts how it is affecting the uh, even prominent people, people from well-to-do families, people from well-off families, educated families. It's not that it is affecting only the street children. It is affecting across class and caste level. So therefore, it has become very, very essential. In fact, against illicit uh, traffic. You know, perhaps we have an act, 88. We have this act, and look at the overall scenario, you will find that children, adolescents, young people, they are the most vulnerable to drug or drug abuse. So therefore, uh, so, uh, this Bachpan uh, Bachao Anunan, this NGO, we all know, had moved the Supreme Court in 2014, saying that we do not have a national action plan to combat this. There are various uh, national, this uh, Department of Social Justice, they have their, the Crime Control Bureau is there, but they, as if they are working uh, at cross There is no, there was no coordination. During this case, Supreme Court found that we do not have a database of the number of uh, drug abuse or the cases which are recorded in the hospitals or in the uh, rehabilitation center, unless we have a database, working database, it will be difficult to formulate a national strategy or a national program. So therefore, in this case, directions were issued uh, to the central government that you prepare a database of this drug addicts uh, from various sources. And once we have the database, we can move it. Central government was also directed to prepare a national action plan. And there was also a direction that under a new education policy, uh, this uh, ill effect of drug consumption uh, should be included in the school curriculum. So thereafter, I do not know what uh, uh, the progress made in this regard. But one thing, in my uh, limited research, what I have noticed is that why this cultivation of opium, export of opium, is in the unit list, this one, the central government. It's a domain for central legislation. But drugs and poisons, interestingly, uh, the, uh, the, our founding fathers have clubbed together drugs and poisons together as a legislative entry in the countries, meaning thereby that this is a legislative arena where both central can make laws and the states can also make laws. So, in Mizoram we have this prohibition law 
but uh, I don't think it was much of a success for whatever reason. Uh, there has to be some study why uh, this law was, it, it had stringent provisions, why this law was not very successful. Perhaps it was too stringent uh, for uh, all the club together, consumption of alcohol with consumption of drugs. In fact, uh, in uh, the Constituent Assembly debates, uh, one of the members of the Constituent Assembly from the Punjab, Sardar Kupinder Singh, he had uh, objected to this Article 47, clubbing innocent liquor with intoxicating drugs. He said that uh, liquor, is, you cannot equate liquor with uh, uh, intoxicating drugs. Drugs is dangerous, liquor is not. So therefore, that was his view. But uh, the Constituent Assembly did not listen to it, what happened to club together. What we have noticed is that places where there is stringent prohibition law, there is marked increase in uh, the number of smokers. I think Mizoram is, uh, is a prime example. And also in uh, taking of drugs. So this is also one aspect. Perhaps the focus went the other way in the, this prohibition law. The focus was on the consumption of liquor. And this somehow got, uh, did not get the attention it deserved. So, be that as it may, uh, what has happened is this, slowly but steadily, Nisura is being engulfed by this problem. Uh, the Times of India, June 26, 2015, they reported that at least 1,321 people had died due to drug abuse in Nisura, including 138 women since 1980. Now, in absolute numbers, 1321 may not be, may not appear to be a big number, but if you look at the population and the percentage wise, it is certainly a significant number. Uh, when the first drug related death due to heroin was detected in the state, the main killer drug in the state was spasmoproxibon, which killed 1160 during the same period and 59 people due to other training benefits. Now, Outlook magazine, they also carried out a survey June 27, 2017. Their survey covered 25,000 people, mostly youth. And they, of these 25,000 people, they found 2,000 drug addicts treated in over 300 rehabilitation centers across the state. And the survey reflected that drug addiction affected indirectly, directly, indirectly almost all the areas of the state. Most of the factors. India today, January 12, 2018, at least 65 people, including 12 women, died from substance abuse in Mizoram 2007. Telegraph, March 23, 2018. At least 232 people died from drug abuse in Mizoram in five years, from since 2013 till March 5 this year. Mizoram Excise and Narcotics Department Commissioner, in an interaction with the media, he informed that officially 280 people had died due to drug abuse and 3,318 people arrested under the NDPS from 2010 to 2007. Of the 3,318 arrested, 2,666 have been booked and cases registered under NDPS Act and uh, the department has also seized 20 cases of heroin, 24 cases of opium, 1,777.88 cases of cannabis and 1,46,730 tablets of this uh, proximal during this period. So, this 
is a clear pointer to the seriousness of the issue. And therefore, it is in the fitness of things that this seminar has been organized. In fact, there was a regional conference in Manali, Himachal Pradesh, regarding the substance issues in Manali. Of all places, Manali is now again has become a center of uh, 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 this drug problem. We have found that uh, there are some foreign tourists, particularly from Russia and Israel, who stay there for months together. And they are involved or engaged in uh, uh, this drug, either as, as consumers or as patients. So, it is not only Goa, it has shifted to this unknown, hither to unknown places. So, based on the deliberations in that regional conference, NAMSA has prepared the NAMSA legal services to the victims of drug abuse and eradication of drug manners scheme 2015. So, in that context, holding and the focus of that scheme is awareness, creating awareness. We have stringent law. In fact, under the, uh, the new Juvenile Justice Act, section 77, 78, I think, uh, anyone found using children, offering drugs to children or using children in trafficking, I think the punishment is about seven years or so. It's very, very stringent. So, notwithstanding such stringent provisions, this is going on. So therefore, the emphasis, in my, in my opinion, should be on awareness and how to take away our children, our new generation, from the lure of drugs. Uh, recently, I came across a beautiful uh, social media uh, campaign by the Assam Police. Assam Police is not known for smart thinking. We all know that. But somehow I found that this is uh, one smart thinking on the part of the Assam Police. In their social media campaign, and you will find it in the Assam Police website, they have drawn six lines like this. And they have said that reading between the lines is an art. Snorting is not. Choose life over drugs. That's where you have to draw a line. Think before you go. The thing can. So I think this is a smart thing that Assam Police has done. One of the few smart things Assam Police has done. And we must uh, congratulate them. I think the Mizoram State Legal Service Authorities can also start a media campaign. People here are very smart. I think this one-liners can really catch the attention of the younger generation. So today I think it's a beginning. From ISO, let us take it to the districts. All of us, all the students are here, paralegal volunteers are here. Let us take this message to the districts, to the remote corners of Mizoram, that we will have a state, that we will have a society of champions, like the ISO Football Club. We are a society of champions, not a society of losers, not a society of drug addicts. We will be champions in sports, we will be champions in music, we will be champions in uh, public affairs. Any sphere of them, but certainly not of drugs. So with these words, I don't want to continue with this. And I thank each and everyone who have taken pains to come here uh, to participate in this seminar. Uh, all the students who have been patiently uh, participating in this seminar, the principal of the college and all the faculty members, judicial officers who are present here, uh, the law secretaries of the two states, Mr. Tiwari who has come all the way from uh, Nagpur. And uh, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, and uh, I wish this program was a grand success and we will carry forward this program to the other corners of the state of Thank you very much. That we have already faced regarding drug abuse, the Lordship has encouraged us that 
we can start afresh and it's not late. We can start from here, we can spread and in our own spheres we can do a lot. And I hope uh, we'll go back, we'll all go back enriched, we'll stay connected to be more effective. And with that speech we have come to the concluding part of today's seminar. I once again thank all the participants, invitees, students, the principal of uh, Isoro Law College, His Lordship Honorable Mr. Justice Michael Zotan Kuma, and the secretaries from uh, the state government, the member uh, secretaries of the State Legal Services Committee of various states. I once again thank every one of you and on behalf of the uh, executive chairman of Mizoram State Legal Services, though his lordship had said that we have to pay tribute to the departed soul of our late Prime Minister. Since the program has already been scheduled, without the cultural program, we'll have the dinner in the evening at 7. It's at Hotel Floria, the same place, I think, where the guests are being put up. And I once again invite all of us here to come for the dinner. It is, it is at 7 at Hotel Floria. Thank you once again.